because I spoke with GGG about the problem and uh, they have a series of AMD machines at their offices and uh, they don't have any problems with them, with their specific hardware AMD configurations that they are running. So it's not all setups, there's some specific setups. So I worked with AMD quite a bit and definitely to their credit, they tried their best to make this work by uh, changing hardware configurations and working with me and helping me with settings and things like that. We tried a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I think ultimately it came down to the CPU I was using. Doesn't work well with Path of Exile for whatever reason. There's a bit of compatibility issue there. I did test the RX 480 graphics card in another system without using an AMD uh, CPU, and it worked well. I didn't have any problems with Path of Exile with it, so it doesn't seem to be so much of a graphics card issue and maybe a, an issue with some specific CPUs. But it was an issue that I couldn't really get around because the Zen CPUs don't come out for quite some time. They might work really well with Path of Exile, but that's still for many months away. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't ethically and comfortably continue to implicitly endorse a product that I wasn't able to actually use to play Path of Exile. So ultimately this whole situation was my mistake because I, I should have uh, really pushed to be able to test and use the hardware for Path of Exile before accepting the sponsorship, right? I naively thought that it would be okay, that we would be able to work it out, and we really did try to work it out, but it just didn't in the end work out. So I'd like to apologize to you guys for putting you in this situation as well. Uh, it's it's not not the best outcome that could have happened for sure, and I'm I'm disappointed that it had to end this way. Uh, this obviously I've decided to end a pretty significant am amount of my financial support that came from this sponsorship, uh, which was a pretty big deal. But I don't think it's worth that to be put in this situation where I'm implicitly endorsing something that I don't fully believe in. I can't promise that I won't make mistakes in the future when it comes to sponsored content. Ultimately, there's no guides out for this thing. <laughs> there's no guides on YouTube that I can follow for how to approach uh, doing sponsored content in new media. I'm very much having to uh, figure out what works for me, what works for you guys, and define my own ethics and uh, boundaries and things that I am actually comfortable with doing. And I don't, I just don't know a lot of this stuff uh, heading into it. So I can't promise that I won't make more mistakes in the future. But I can promise to you guys that above all else, and if, if there are things that I need to tell you guys that I will tell it to you as that transparency will be one of my number one focuses always and hence the reason I'm making this video so that even if I do make mistakes you guys are going to know about it you guys are going to understand what happened what went wrong and why and how I'm going to improve upon that in the future so when it comes to hardware uh, or brand deals in the future it's going to be something that I'm going to be very cautious about because of this experience and I'm only going to take them on if I I am able to use the hardware beforehand to test it to be able to make that make sure that I can comfortably endorse it and then or B already be using the hardware for example right like so if someone like Razer approached me I've been using Razer hardware for years and years and I've had very very good experiences with it so I'd be very comfortable in taking on a hardware sponsorship from a brand like Razer for example when it came to this I hadn't used AMD hardware before and I didn't think that would be an issue at the time Thought that I would be able to get the hardware, test it out, that it would work well, if there was any problems we'd be able to work it out. Uh, and that was a mistake. That was a mistake and I apologize for that. So I think that's I think that's about I think that about sums it up for you guys, everything everything you guys need to know. If there is any further questions you have about this decision to drop the sponsorship, please do ask in the comments below. I will answer you very truthfully as I can. Uh, as, as you guys know, hopefully from this, that transparency is super important to me. I want you guys to fully understand all of this. And if I make an error, I want you guys to know and fully understand uh, why that is the case. So ending this off, I would like to thank AMD for the opportunity here with this sponsorship. I think it was a pretty big deal. I'm sad that it didn't work out, but ultimately I think it's better uh, for both myself and AMD and for you guys especially uh, for me to, to drop this sponsorship essentially, to end this sponsorship. Um, I, I have to say I had very good experiences with their CPUs for streaming. They do a very wonderful job of encoding for streaming. I got about very, very good performance uh, from their CPU when it came to specifically streaming and had no problems with the, uh, the RX 480 graphics card, which I thought which I do honestly think is a, a pretty decent card. It's, it's good, quite good for its price especially. Um, but uh, ultimately, and what it all comes down to is that there, there is some issues there with Path of Exile. And uh, I hope that AMD and Path of Exile and GG can work together to resolve those issues for the people that out there that are trying to play Path of Exile and AMD machines that are having issues. Uh, but I, I won't be a part of that. I won't be a direct part of 
uh, that kind of like trying to figure that out anymore because uh, I don't think it does any of us any favors. So guys, thank you very much for your understanding and uh, thank you very much for your support. I do, as I said, I promise you guys if it comes to any uh, hardware endorsements in the future or hardware brand deals or sponsorships uh, that I will follow what I have defined now to be my new ethical standards when it comes to that sort of thing to make sure that I can test the hardware first or am already using it and already endorse it. So that is going to be it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching. Some people like to think that the deep web is a joke. It's not. In no way is it a place some half-assed show-off should even think about stumbling into. In fact, I would tell even the most seasoned of hackers with any fiber of a moral compass to stay the fuck away from that place. Because it's a place that will scar you and leave you terrified to follow the cyber footprints left by someone else's shadow ever again. I know this because I'm a hacker. Or, at least I used to be one. I had been using computers since I was 12 years old. I had always been fascinated with the idea of being a cyber crusader, determined to find the new uncharted territories of the internet. I'd gotten pretty good at utilizing bits of software here and there, and it even got to the point where the slow crawl of di- Yeah, I just flipped the lights on. The door was just open. Basically anything that could ruin a company, we try to access. So we're about to hit up a power substation. It's surrounded by a barbed wire fence. We will get in, there's no doubt about it. I'm in the building. <laughs> Server room. We're not seeing cameras. I think the surveillance sign is a lie. It's kind of creepy, yeah. We are the attacker team. We are offensive security. Our, our goal is to achieve full access. I'm extremely optimistic. As I desire. This guy, holy buckets. The wonderful thing about all of this is it's perfectly legal. <laughs> we like to bring in a mix of people with different technical skills. You know, pretend like we work here. My specialties, if you will, really involve social engineering. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to download some malicious scripts. Uh, background mainly in application pen testing. Given a determined enough attacker, it doesn't stand a chance. I come from the military, specifically the army as a paratrooper and a medic. I originally practiced doing this stuff at home. Uh, penetration tester, uh, focus more on the network side of things. You need to have the ability to kind of think outside the box, then you can start to hack stuff. So we're currently on our way to the first office location Controls. where we'll be basically conducting reconnaissance just to see what the area looks like, where we're gonna gain access, uh, what things we need to be aware of. We're sort of close. There's the offices. Anytime you're going to break into a building, you have to be aware of people, you have to be aware of the security controls that they have in place. A reconnaissance is going to help us figure some of that out. The target will be on the left, and this is the employee parking. Looks like there is not a fence along the wooded area. Drive casual. <laughs> the goal is going to be look at different approaches. Over here is all a neighborhood, and this, this is wooded. But there's no fence here. Look for cameras. Try to get a sense of when people are going to be there. Office, office. Uh, a bunch of cameras out on this side. What the surrounding area looks like. Are there neighbors who are going to see what we're doing who might call the authorities? We've got residents, so if anybody sees us, so we've got a problem. So it looks fairly accessible. It'd be fairly simple to have somebody enter from the wooded area or simply just drive up into the employee parking lot. 
like you belong, you just walk up to the door, uh, assuming there's not anybody inside, you just go free reign of place. Social engineering is also referred to as people hacking. People are the number one weakness from a security perspective in any organization. Our costume is basically a technician. So you've got a polo, jeans, work boots. In order to capture some of this, we've also basically used a GoPro inside of a small satchel bag. That's a, it's a bag camera. Right now, him and Paul are in the, in the lobby. Talk, talking to the receptionist. They dropped two of our contact names. Looks like we're getting visitor badges. It's not that unexpected that your internet service provider might show up to test if you're having speed issues with your network. Doing a lot of sign, which is typical of what we should be doing, just kind of creating a sense of inconvenience, hoping to play on her you know, willingness to want to help people. Confidence is extremely important, and that will come naturally, having done your homework in terms of uh, researching the company and, and solidifying a pretext. Sounds like reception is a little open to the guys are expecting. We look like we're about to go raid some shit. The thing about this, besides the fact that it is by far the most fun, <laughs> is you gotta think on your feet. We are going to try to get past physical security controls. Of course, we're an ethical hacking company, so what that means is we're not gonna break stuff. Okay, so you guys are gonna go in first. I think we should wait for you in the garage. Mm -hmm. So that when you get to that back door, we can just let you in. We went in in two teams. One team went in uh, through a wooded area where it wasn't fenced in, approached the back door. The other team simply parked in the employee lot and walked to the employee entrance as though that's where the employees were supposed to be. Some doors you can use what's called a shovel tool. It's basically a way just to get in there and get the door to open. We have a tool that we can use to go underneath the door to snake up to grab a handle and simply pull down on the handle from the inside. Sometimes the doors aren't locked. And the first thing is just check if it's open. Okay, the door's open. <laughs> We've already found three iPads and a uh, laptop, so we're, we're doing pretty good so far. Are the cards be mine, including PIN numbers?
it's designed to be physically deployed at a target location that we want to maintain a you know, ongoing or rather persistent connection. It's a small computer that's just a hardware botnet computer. So what we can do is plug that into an outlet and then into the network as well. Remotely we can control that, uh, install software like malware scripts, uh, penetration history scripts, things like that. We had free reign of the office space for as long as we wanted, hacked a few computers, had some pretty good success there. In fact, since the domain admin credentials in their network just from that visit alone. We got everybody. Everybody has their equipment. Yeah, cell phones in the truck. Coast is clear still. Calm down, dude. There's microwaves that go out from a sensor. Anything that's in front of it, it's going to bounce off. That sensor's going to have a resistance and read it back saying, okay, I know something's here. A1 flight right there. Looks like they're on their way back. This was way better than a long ass walk through the cold woods. Given the sensor is so close to the ground, we can just toss a steve over the fence and then block the sensor. Once the sensor's blocked, we wait a minute to make sure that the, the camera hasn't gone. Now we're in. We actually don't know about the sensor itself, but the camera has 280 degree view. Which basically means that it can't see behind the pole that it's mounted on. Okay, we need to get the, the shield out. Oh, you're in a cold day. It sucks out here. <laughs> what this is going to do is this is going to block the infrared component of the sensor. You should effectively see my body heat disappear. And we're going to send Steve over the fence again. So we're going to stay as far out as possible that we feel safe and just arc around it. So, pretty much looking at it. Right on shot to the corner. It's either going to work and we're going to be brilliant for it, or it's going to fail miserably. So we're wearing our uh, smog type thing to protect from any arcs that would happen. You wear cotton clothing so that in the event that you get hit with an arc, your clothing burns instead of melting to your skin. Everything is completely self-sufficient in here so long as it stays plugged in. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that we can hit the internal network. We might try to pick a lot, but you know, I'm not gonna just smash the thing with a hammer. It's an art. When you can't break it, just dismantle it. We're in. Effectively a, a cloner. We'll be able to capture employees' cards and write them to our own cards to get unfettered access into the building, usually at night. This is the fake badges that we created. We're great.
Yeah, actually, I'm just looking for the bathroom. Uh, it's to the front right here. Uh, no, I don't. This isn't the normal USB connector. We've just written some basic code. When we plug it into somebody's system, it's gonna automatically. That can basically do anything that he can do on his machine just remotely. We found some unlocked systems, uh, actually dropped some malicious files on them. I can start the microphone. So I can now start listening to you physically talking. I can take a screen capture of what's on your desktop. I take pictures with your webcam to see if you're sitting at the computer or not. No, he, he pretty much got in his truck, showed up, and cornered us. To be honest, my nerves are a little bit shot with this guy. These companies understand that they need to have a stronger security posture. It's increasing awareness, and companies are starting to do much better. We still have a long ways to go. But we, we're, I think we're seeing improvements out there. Yeah. You think you have all those little holes patched, and, and then you find out that you know they found another way to get in. It is a good experience, and it is a, a learning experience. It feels like sometimes you take two steps forward, but yet, you know, then you're taking two or three steps backwards. So For building like this? Really? Right now, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, the, the internet is kind of like the wild, wild west. Uh, maybe people aren't necessarily dying, but there's a lot of people hacking. It doesn't take much to do so.
so goes the chain of ascension. mercenaries into our service. More pressing affairs deserve my attention.
Care Pack.